Southeast Georgia and the Low Country. This is WJCL 22 Morning News. See us now. Breaking right now on WJCL 22 Morning News, a fire at a club has the Tomage Bridge and part of a major highway shut down. You're looking at live pictures this morning. We'll walk you through what we know right now. Ukraine under attack, Russian troops moving closer to the capital, families running for their lives. The new concerns this morning. As we have found now is, is an adult male, a father, who has uh, shot and killed his three children. Five people are dead after a reported murder-suicide inside a church. The unusual reason the family was there in the first place and the ongoing fight, investigators say, may have led to those deadly moments. A four-year-old shot and killed outside a grocery store, who police now say pulled the trigger. It is right now 6 o'clock on your Tuesday morning, and we are looking live from our Skyview 22 camera at the Harbortown Lighthouse out on Hilton Head Island. We want to thank you so much for waking up with us right here on WJCL 22. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Emma Hamilton. And I'm Frank Solkowski. We're not going to waste too much time getting over to meteorologist <laughs> Jonathan Myers. And Jonathan, I know we've been watching this weather mm -hmm. closely. It is just, just, just Tuesday. Yeah. But I'm working towards the weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I know the weather's going to get better as we move along throughout the week, correct? Absolutely. It is chilly this morning mm -hmm. and a little warmer than what we had uh, yesterday afternoon. But we will see a nice little warm-up. Officially not spring yet. I know today is the first day of March. But and wait till you see that extended forecast. Definitely going to feel like springtime uh, over the next uh, couple of days. Even back up closer to 80 towards the end of the week. Starting the morning off in the low 40s for most of us. And by mid-morning, 9, 10 o'clock, maybe up to about lunchtime, We'll probably see some clouds around, but uh, becoming mostly sunny once again into the afternoon. Highs for most of us today around 72. And there's those clouds back off to our west. More like filter sunshine is what we'll probably see by mid mornings. These clouds quickly will be rolling through the area. No rain the forecast for today. Actually, dry weather throughout the rest of the work week. Like I said, by the end of the week, close to 80 degrees. And I want to detail that weekend forecast. That's right. Looking warm for both Saturday and also for Sunday. All right, thanks so much, Jonathan. We're breaking right now. A fire at a gentleman's club has the Talmadge Bridge and part of Highway 17 shut down. Take a look at the, these live pictures we have where you can still see that smoke billowing into the air there in the low country. According to the Hardyville Fire Department, the fire happened at Club Karma on Highway 17 in Jasper County. I'll start around 2 o'clock this morning. Right now, Savannah Police, they have the Talmadge closed and Jasper County Fire Rescue has Highway 17 shut down from the bridge to Highway 315. Our crews have been out there all morning long. We continue to learn more. We'll pass any new details we have along to you. A new video coming out of Ukraine this morning. Families are scrambling to leave the country as Russian airstrikes continue. We are now in day six of the invasion. And this morning, officials are concerned a second wave of Russian troops will overtake the Ukrainian resistance. Here's what we know right now. At least 400 civilians in Ukraine have either been hurt or killed, and more than 500,000 refugees have fled the country. How about this? Right now, a Ukrainian church in South Carolina collecting money to help those overseas trying to get to safety. The, there's long lines, large crowds on the border to get into Poland. And these people, basically, they have their um, bags, they have whatever they could grab, and they're standing there to, in order to talk to a customs officer. They don't have a lot of food. What they have is on them, and they have a large need there in Ukraine. Now, the pastor of New Life Ukrainian Church in Spartanburg says he was born in Ukraine, and both he and his wife still have family there. We want to show you this troubling satellite picture near Ukraine's capital, where, as you can see, a Russian military convoy has stretched more than 40 miles along there. As ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, how men who've fled the country are returning and ready to fight. Overnight, a new round of bombs hitting Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, as the Russian invasion enters day six. Now the International Criminal Court says it will investigate potential crimes against humanity in Ukraine. 16. 
Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky accusing Russia of war crimes. In this video from Monday, human rights organizations accuse Russian forces of using cluster bombs to pummel a residential neighborhood in Kharkiv. The weapon is banned by many countries. The bombs open mid-air just above their target, then rain down hundreds of smaller munitions over a large area. Zelensky also accuses Russia of using highly condemned thermobaric bombs, which draw in oxygen from the atmosphere to create a devastating explosion. Now Ukraine's prosecutor general is posting video and pictures to social media of damage in Kharkiv. President Zelensky also signing an application to join the European Union, a largely symbolic move because the process could take years. Zelensky also requesting a no-fly zone over Ukraine. But the White House is dismissing that idea. It would essentially mean the U.S. military would be shooting down planes, Russian planes. That is definitely escalatory. That is not something the president wants to do. This morning, an ominous new sign from the front lines. Satellite images now show a convoy of Russian military vehicles and tanks approaching the capital, Kyiv. The convoy stretching an estimated 40 miles. Meanwhile, in Moscow, the Russian economy feeling the shock of Western sanctions. Russians waiting in long lines at banks and ATMs, running out of cash, their currency crashing. But President Putin remaining defiant, calling the West an empire of lies. More than 400 civilian casualties have now been reported in Ukraine, but officials say the number could be far higher. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Coming up after our show on Good Morning America, extensive team coverage of the conflict in Ukraine. Two crews are live in Ukraine, while another crew is live in Moscow. You can catch GMA right after our shows starting at 7 o'clock. And tonight, President Joe Biden is set to deliver his first State of the Union address to Congress. Historically, the speech offers presidents a chance to highlight their priorities and agenda, but much of that is taking a back seat right now as the Russia-Ukraine war rages on. You can watch the State of the Union address right here on WJCL 22 tonight. Coverage starts at 8 o'clock with the address beginning at 9. As we have found now, is it's an adult male, a father, who has uh, shot and killed his three children. Five people are dead this morning in a reported murder-suicide inside of a church. Frank is in the newsroom for us this morning, walking us through what we know about this horrific case. Yeah, this thing is truly horrific. Emma, police say a father shot his children and another person before turning the gun on himself, and all this happened inside a Sacramento church. Here's uh, more information. It all happened last night around 5 o'clock California time. Deputies say uh, they were inside the church for a supervised visit and that the children's mother has a restraining order out against their father. Well, during the visit, investigators say the man shot and killed his three children and the person supervising the visit before turning the gun on himself. It's just horrific, and unfortunately it does happen, and it does happen in the county. Domestic violence is, is all too common. Um, this obviously rising to the level of, of killing um, innocent children um, is, is obviously beyond anyone's rational comprehension. Um, it's hard to really understand what goes through a person's mind. Now, a church worker who was upstairs at the time heard the shots and called 911 right away. Deputies telling us that the children were just 9, 10, and 13 years old. Well, right now, I can tell you that investigators are working to figure out a specific motive in this case. Em? All right, Frank, thanks so much. It's heart wrenching because, uh, you know, it's a, it's a little life that, you know, that didn't, you know, live long and this particular thing didn't have to happen. We now know a four-year-old boy shot and killed in a grocery store parking lot, got a hold of the gun, and accidentally shot himself. It happened in DeKalb County right outside of Atlanta Sunday night. Police say the little boy was inside a car with a baby and a 13-year-old when it happened. They say the little boy's mother was inside the store at the time. We're told the 13-year-old ran inside for help right away, but then it was too late. A gun, you just got to be more responsible for it and put it up in a safe place. Parents need to take more responsibilities as far as locking up, you know, weapons and things so it won't be as easy accessible for the kid. Police say no one else was hurt and no arrests have been made. Right now, a former police chief behind bars in South Carolina accused of faking his own suicide. 
William Spivey, who faces more than 70 felony charges, was fired as the chief of police up in North Carolina last year. He was set to appear in court last week, but never showed up. His family says he never came back from a fishing trip near Myrtle Beach. Investigators found his boat and a car abandoned along with a handwritten note and a gun. Investigators didn't believe it was a suicide and tracked him to an apartment complex where he was then arrested. Well, this morning, Black History Month has come to an end, but WJCL 22 wants to continue celebrating the people and places who have helped shape us. All February long, we shared those very important stories covering every quarter of our viewing area from Southeast Georgia to the South Carolina Low Country. Right now, you can see every one of those stories on our website, WJCL.com. Even though February has come and gone, we want to continue sharing those important stories because black history is American history.